Hey everyone, Miranda Patron here. I think that I've finally settled on a color scheme to paint my stone that I made from the Happy Dotting Company mold. Um, I'm going to go for it, I think. I keep going back and forth, back and forth, because I only have this one lovely smooth little stone, and I guess I could always make more, because I'm finding for winter I'll have less stones, so that's a debate. I guess I could do that, but I wanted to go with something and stick with it, so I think I have it figured out. I'm going to go with kind of a fall slash metallic theme. So I'm just going to paint my whole stone black here, and we will get started. Okay, so it's totally painted black. I'm just letting it dry now. Alright, I've gathered some of my metallics and fall colors here, and I think that's what I'm going to go for. You just got to go for it and start it. Another good thing, I don't know if you all know, but the mold also puts the center dot start for you. I don't know if you can see that raised area right there. So I don't have to measure where it's going to go. I just pick my colors and be bold, right? Alright, here we go. Some splendid gold to start our center. Continuing with the dazzling metallics, I'm going to go with the white pearl. And I think I'll do the eight dots, so we'll do our plus sign. I'm really going to try to fill in this stone as much as possible. some titanium white to do some little ones in here. a little bit of the sunny day here. It's a nice light yellow. Again, I think we'll do some, just two little dots of the titanium in between here, really, really tiny. If you're using dotting tools, you probably want to go with your absolute smallest. This stone is probably about three inches in diameter. So for planning your design. Okay, and that kind of helps fill in there. Gonna go back to our splendid gold again. 
bring it out here a bit farther. go with some honey brown now. And I'm just gonna use my etcher to toss some little dots around this one. It's just a dotting tool for nails that I broke the end off of. I use it for etching designs in so they're easy to erase but I guess it'll work for doing these little dots too. So go with your smallest dotting tool using the honey brown for these ones, just a little tiny around our splendid gold. One of the things I love about the metallics is they dry with a skin on the top pretty quickly so you can work a little faster on your stone or your piece because they already dried in place and there's not as much danger of bleeding into the other dots that are wet that you're putting down. Not that I'm impatient or anything. Just watching paint dry is not my favorite pastime. <laughs> I'm sure it's not yours either. So we're just doing one ring of the honey brown around the splendid gold. Go back to that titanium white again, and we'll do a dot in between each of these, just as it starts to go down in between. Just kind of offsetting the brown that way. I think I'm actually gonna steal a little of the white and do two dots down to our yellow.
next I have a buttermilk, which I'm just going to do like a semicircle around the top of our um, honey brown that we did. So we'll just start it at the top of these and then have it come down to reach the white that we just put on. You can see it's really starting to fill in nicely with those golden browns and yellows. Alright, now I'm just going to toss a little dot of the coral blush above our whites here in between. It's kind of a, a lead-in so that we can put a nice big fat dot of copper above it. Okay. I want this dot to be fairly large, so I'm just totally dipping my brush completely up past the ferrule. Deep, deep, just load it as much as possible.
Okay, let's do some tiny titanium, <laughs> excuse me, titanium white dots around the copper that we just put down. And again, I'm just using my etching tool. I'm just stealing from the top dot up here because I don't want too much paint when I want the dots to be a little smaller. As you come around the bend down to the bottom of the copper dot. And I do the same thing with the paintbrush if I'm using it. I'll just grab from here or I'll unload a little bit, like I say, usually at the next one or on my palette just so I don't have too much when I want to go down to the smaller dots. And you'll start to get a feel for how much you need on your tool or your brush to make the size that you need. It just takes some practice, but you will get a feel for it the more you do it. I promise. <laughs> There's some people who are doing amazing work and they've only been dotting for three to six months. So oh, it doesn't take long. Here, so we have a nice ring of white around each of our coppers. Okay, I think I'm going to grab the copper again and just go with a little bit bigger dot. And we'll go around our white that we just did.
we got a little much on this one, so I'm just going to drop some off at the next dot because I don't want them to be too large coming down around the size here, but side, but they are a little bit larger, which is what I wanted. Gives it that kind of beaded, beaded look. Too much again. Okay, the next color I have is this lovely new heritage brick. So it's kind of, you know, a coppery, darkish, brownish red, you know, like your bricks, regular red brick color. And I think it'll complement our copper really nicely here. And I'm just putting it at the top part here where the bend, the bend starts around each of the copper dots. And then I think to go down in between to lighten it up a little bit, I'm going to grab some of the sunny yellow, the sunny day yellow that we had, and just, do you want to do three? Maybe do like a little tripod here. Why not, right? It'll help fill in the spaces here in between. And I should have gone around my whole design because see in here it gets a little tight. So I'll have to do them a little off center, a little smaller. So they're a bit crowded in that area, but it's okay. Overall, it won't be the end of the world. That's one of the things I usually like to do is check the design to make sure all the way around it'll fit the thing that I want to do. bring our gold out here again to kind of brighten things up a little bit and it's going to give us a little bit of a springboard to put a giant dot of 
Let's do maybe chocolate. I have a multi-surface metallic. That's the chocolate. It's delicious. <laughs> Again, this is just the Splendid Gold Dazzling Metallic. And it's just going to help us make a little platform for a big old dot of the chocolate. I'm getting off the screen here, sorry. Alright, this one's a multi-surface, so the consistency is a little bit thicker. It's just a little different. But I want to do a fairly large dot, so again, I'm going to get a bunch on there. And just give us a nice big old round circle. And I'm going to have to do it a little less thick than I did that, because we don't want it to drip down the edges here. In fact, I might need to rescue that one in a minute. I have a tendency to way overload my brush. But I kind of like the 3D effect that you can get it looks like your dots are kind of raised. So, but you see here, gravity will start to pull. Even with the multi surface, they're a little bit thicker, so they're a little more giving, but and stay in place. But not always. I might have to babysit these dots a little bit, <laughs> which is okay. At least I get the colors that I want. Sometimes I have to babysit some of my works anyway because between children and pets, my cat loves to jump up onto my workbench here for some reason and then he drags his tail through wet paint and then he runs all around the house. Or he'll step in my palette and then we have kitty footprints, that's even better. <laughs> or my adorable little son likes to finger paint. I have green on my white windowsills right now. At least he chose a good color. Green and white go well together. Alright, so after I swirl these I probably try to leave the paint up higher at the end of my swirl. And then hopefully it will not. Alright, so I babysat them until they were dry and didn't drip down. Now I'm going to, let's see, go back to the pearl white and do a large dot at the top of each of these. Not as large as the other ones, but larger than it's going to be going down and around. And then I'm going to make around tiny, tiny ones to go around the chocolate that we did.
I'm debating doing more than one ring. I'll just go around with the one ring first and then decide after. thinking too that uh, brick red I think I might actually use that for the next ring around the chocolate now I'm thinking about other things as I do this <laughs> you're supposed to just enjoy the little painting adventure rather than getting distracted right I go around my house some days doing chore to chore to chore and then somehow I don't manage to get anything finished because I started the dishes and got interrupted. I started the laundry, got interrupted. I started something else, got interrupted. <laughs> and I never make it back to the thing that I started. So some days, and thankfully I have a very easygoing and forgiving husband, but my kids also help out a lot. So but the little boy, my Giuseppe, really likes to help, and his deal is undoing all the things that we do. So he likes to take dishes out of the cabinets. He likes to take the laundry out of the drawers, <laughs> much to the chagrin of my oldest daughter. Her job is usually laundry, so she's not super excited about the fact that he undoes everything that she does. But I guess it's like a rite of passage, right? Especially when you have the range of a teenager all the way down to a one-year-old. Alright. That's coming along nicely, and I think I am going to go ahead with the brick red for the next ring around it. Just pouring it out here. And I think I'm going to go with a little bit larger dots. So each time when you do a larger dot at the top, it kind of helps to start create um, that petal-like effect. So it's kind of changing the shape as you go around more. You get a more elongated round around that dot. So depending on how many you do, you can really 
have it come quite down to a point. Quite far to a point. It's a good thing I'm not chewing gum and walking today. I can't talk and paint at the same time here. <laughs> I'm always totally enamored by people who can play an instrument and sing at the same time. I don't think I do either well, but I just think it's amazing when people can combine two skills like that. Okay, I think I'm going to add a ring of the copper. <laughs> Somebody's trying to find me. I can hear him at the door. My awesome husband is trying to give me time to paint today on this lovely rainy Saturday. We have the older girls are at birthday parties. And the only one home is the baby, but he's slowly figuring out how to open doors and get from A to B. Sometimes they're just too smart, too quick. I love the way this red looks with the copper. I have yet to use this brick color before, but I'm kind of excited about it. And it's great for fall and it goes well with the metallics. Now my brain's dreaming of ways to incorporate it in other projects. <laughs> Here we go. I've been watching a ton of other videos when I have an opportunity on um, acrylic pouring. It seems to be gaining popularity, but some people just have amazing talents of mixing colors. It just blows my mind and I love abstract work and I've dabbled a little bit into it and the resin it looks like so much fun of course all of these things you know the art supplies cost money <laughs> we all know that so maybe for Christmas I'll have to wait and see But it's nice too, I don't know how many of you take breaks from doing the dots, but it's nice to take a break. It's nice to go easy on your eyes for a little bit and have a different art form just to be creative still, but and I can still combine colors and the abstract is kind of more of a challenge for me. Obviously you go from doing dots and placement purposeful placement to 
pouring paint on the canvas and I mean you can t kind of when you fill your cup decide what order to put your paints in or you can just do placement of the paints on canvas I'm still learning all that but I have a hard time just accepting that it's going to be abstract at the end <laughs> And they just come out so gorgeous, too. And we're so critical of our own work, so I'm always, well, I don't like that one little part, or that part had a bubble, or it dried and it cracked in that section. And, you know, there's always something I can find wrong with it. So being a newbie at something is a challenge as well. So all the more reason that we try to take our time and teach, teach skills that we can, especially with the dotting. Okay, I think I think I'm gonna toss some more of that titanium white, only do a bigger dot in between these so we have a little bit of contrast in there. Okay, then I think we'll draw out that coral blush again. It's a nice little accent color next to the copper. After the coral blush, maybe we'll toss a couple dots of some true red, so it's a brighter red, <clears throat> excuse me, to kind of make a tripod, or make a platform rather, and then we'll bring the gold out to here again. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Okay. All right, so I have the True Red, and that's from the Americana line as well. And I'm just gonna do two, two dots here to kind of make a platform to put a larger dot of gold. So we're bringing that out from the center, I think. That's my plan for right now, anyway. <laughs> I think I will do that, because it helps brighten it up, too, bringing it out. Not that I don't mind the dark, actually. I do kind of like ending it, the design, on a dark note. But I want to keep going, and I still have room on my stone, so... So this is the true red. I probably have said that, like, four times now. Three, four, who's counting, right? Just making sure you know the colors. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just debating. I have other metallics that I'm debating bringing in. There's this lovely Venetian gold that I have that I might, oops, sorry. I might use instead of the regular gold, the splendid gold, because this is a little more coppery. Yep, that's what I'm going to do. Switch to Venetian with the dazzling metallics. I'm just trying to keep you all on your toes, right? All right. 
Nation Gold. Venetian with a V. I know it sounds like I'm saying Phoenician, like Phoenix, but it's Venetian. Yeah, I almost said it wrong again. And this one is a little bit thinner, so I just have to be cautious as to not leave a big drip on the side. I forgot how much I liked this one. I used to use it quite often. In fact, it's almost gone. I'm going to have to get some more. The name Metallic Madness just popped into my head. <laughs> it's not going to be the name of this piece, but it does have a lot of metallics in it. I'm kind of excited. I did a couple voting polls to see what you all thought as far as deciding what colors I could use on this one and only homemade stone. I don't know why it was so difficult for me, but it was. I just didn't want to. There's so many great color combinations, and there's so many possibilities, and it's such a lovely stone. I just couldn't decide, so I appreciate all the help that I had with finally coming up with a plan. And like I said, this one's a little thinner, so I just want to make sure... I'm not leaving the drip at the bottom when I let up. Otherwise the gravity's gonna pull the dot down. I'm glad I decided to do this today. I see so many people doing these and I forget how much of a challenge it is to have a stone that's thicker like this. I have the lovely ones from Maine that I like to use but when you have a nice dome shape, you do have to remember that it can be a challenge working around the sides. And sometimes on the stones from Maine, I avoid the sides altogether because some of the rocks are so gorgeous, I like to leave them natural with just a little design on top. But this is more challenging than I remember. But it's worth it, right? Challenge, adventure, great colors, all in one. All right, let those dry. Okay, I'm going to grab my etcher and do some, I think I'm going to do a couple rounds of little white ones around these. Just so we have some contrast next to the dark. My son has been listening to Elmo a ton lately, and I have Elmo songs stuck in my head. It's kind of throwing me off. <laughs> you guys have that happen? You get a song stuck in your head, and then it's stuck in your head for days and days and days. I don't know why kids' music does that. Maybe it's just me. It's usually songs, I mean, not all the kid music, sometimes other songs stick in my head, but it's usually ones that I'm not 100% a fan of, or, you know, you hear it on the radio and it just happens to be played 50 times a day, so you get it stuck in your head. <laughs> it's 
hard too with the licensing. I can't listen to music while I'm doing those videos, these videos for you guys, because the there are copyright issues. If I play anything where the royalties are supposed to be going to someone else, I can't uh, can't play copyrighted music on the video. What kind of music do you guys listen to when you're painting, or do you like it quiet so you can hear yourself counting in your head? I used to start off that way. Counting the dots. I actually had a musician contact me a little while ago letting me know I could use her music in my video, but then I, being the technological genius that I am, no, that's total sarcasm, <laughs> I couldn't get it to work and I didn't have the heart to go back and constantly be hounding her to ask her how to do it. The format wouldn't work, and then I couldn't get to work on the video, and then I couldn't play it with the video, with the software I had, so. Just me talking it is. Plus I've had some of you tell me that it's distracting to have music while I'm talking, so that was good feedback as well. So even if it was copyright approved. All right, be honest, how many of you are holding your breath while I'm doing these dots? <laughs> I noticed I was too. Sometimes you just get really focused. probably hear my cat crunching away in the background too. I think we never feed him, but when I'm sitting in here he comes running in and chows down. Crunch, crunch, crunch is all I can hear. And then our hedgehog likes to grind her teeth on the water bottle, so sometimes that's all I can hear when I'm painting. I don't know if you guys can hear him on the video, but...
I hope not. <laughs> Okay, one more. The house seems so quiet today and my husband is helping keep the boy busy for me. We call him the boy. Isn't that funny? I suppose if we had more it wouldn't just be the boy, but... Giuseppe. Really not doing the greatest with this dotting tool because I don't use it enough. I probably should try to start using these more, but also it's time to get new paintbrushes. As I said in the last video, it's time to retire some of these. They're starting to get frayed and not able to be salvaged. So, all right, all right. I think I'm gonna go back to the sunny day. We're going to go light to dark again, so we'll do sunny day, and then head around with some of the darker colors. Okay, I'm not sure if you can see, but it's starting to get a little tacky because it's been a while since I had touched this paint and I didn't put a wet paper towel over it, so I'm just going to re-pour. A little of the yellow, the sunny day yellow. But to stop that from happening, you can just put a damp paper towel over your paints. Or my palettes like these have an actual plastic cover that I can put over them. And if you have about the same size stone that I am using, then you're probably starting to run out of space on the sides. So don't have to crowd it too much, just put as many as you can around and I promise I'm not counting. you can see I must have got my spacing off a little bit because I can actually fit the yellow all the way around on this one. But had I not said anything, I don't think anybody would have noticed. I brought stones that I feel like I've made major mistakes on to classes before just to show people, you know, point out the mistake on this one or whatever. And when they can't, I try to explain that that's... The beauty of it is you finish your piece and you're the only one that knows where you really think that there might have been a mistake made or if you were off in counting or if your spacing was a little bit off, but people really can see the beauty in art before they go looking into the mega details and say, well, you only have eight on that side, but you have nine on this side and that dot has ten around it and the other ones all have eleven or whatever. <laughs> Especially once you get into the outer edges of your stone or you're doing a lot of little ones, it's, it's still going to look great. 
And sometimes you might need to just walk away and come back to it, which I hear is something that is worth repeating. All right, so yellow. Let's go back to that bricky red again. I keep not pouring it in my palette because I've run out of space, basically, my palette, but then I keep wanting to use it. <laughs> I keep having to grab it out of the lid here. like how it starts to look like beads on some of these. Somebody actually brought, I forgot what she called it now, they were crystals. And it's like a huge pattern and you put these crystals on the pattern, kind of like a, a paint by number. And then you fill it in with the crystals. And it looks like pixels or dots. And that was really, really cool. You guys probably already know about this because everybody else is always way ahead of me <laughs> with these, with finding out about these things. But I thought they were pretty neat. And she had a special tool where she had to pick up and put the crystals down with. But I thought it was really cool. I don't know how I got, oh, because this looked like beading. I was going to say, I don't know how I got off on that topic, but when my kid, girls were little, they used to have these foam mosaic stickers that you could do like a sticker by number type thing. And you could put the stickers in, on the design and they could make like a little mosaic out of foam stickers. They thought that was great. And they were fun for kids and not as messy as paint for the moms. Alright, so this is that brick red again. What is it called again? Heritage brick. Sorry, I keep saying brick red. Heritage brick. I know I said I was going to go light to dark, but I'm going to switch it up here for a second just to kind of do something different. I'm going to go with the Splendid Gold after we just did the brick.
All right, so my camera died, battery died rather, but I finished up doing splendid gold around the heritage brick that we did. And I'm just debating what to do next for our, our space. I think I am going to go around them with the copper and then maybe if I can fit it, the chocolate. That's my plan. Copper. And then the chocolate. I kind of want to squeal. I'm so excited about about all these metallics on one stone. I'm so thankful that the lovely lady Angela over at the Happy Dotting Company sent this to me to test it out. She's super generous and sweet and has great products and a great personality. Definitely a pleasure to work with. Last little one here. I don't know why I say little guy, little one, little all everything, but just a habit. <laughs> Do you have words like that that you use all the time? You don't know why you say them. Oh, that little thing. My husband's like, why do you think everything's so cute? <laughs> Although I don't call him little and cute. He's my big 6'3 marine. All right, that copper. All right, do I think, I think maybe I'll do chocolate here around it. Can I fit it? Oh, I think my spacing might be a little tight in some areas. All right, I'm gonna have to look at the whole stone and see what I can do. I'm just gonna let you look with me. <laughs> so you can see the spacing's a little tighter here than here. I'm debating. I just want to 
We'll leave it and end it like that so we still have some black negative space. And there's no negative space on the top. It'll just be as you look at the stone from the sides. Okay, I think after careful consideration that I am going to end it here. Which was a lot of work. You guys did great if you made it all the way through this. Even if you didn't, you did awesome. And it's probably going to be one of the longer tutorials, but at least you'll have some time to see how to put in spacing and see how this lovely handmade stone turned out. So I had a lot of people asking how I ended up doing it. And I didn't. I was delayed in deciding. So, give my thumbs up. I got distracted by visitors coming in. Can you say hi? Say hi? <laughs> hi honey, thanks for taking my our son out. It's like a paint. It's my lovely husband. Woo! Alright, sorry about that. Got a view. <laughs> my lovely husband brought me some Starbucks too to keep going today. <laughs> All right, my household is obviously getting busy again and people are coming home. So my decision is to leave it this way. I'm super happy with it. Thank you again to the Happy Dotting Company for the awesome, awesome mold. And uh, yeah, if you guys like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have ideas for future videos that you want to see, please feel free to let me know. I'm always up for a challenge. And uh, yeah, if you're looking for other pictures of my art or to join in on conversations I am on Facebook as well and then Instagram so I hope you all have a great evening and I'm going to get back to my mom and family life now thank you all for watching have a great night